Hey YouTube, it's Chuck. Good morning. Welcome back to the apiary. Well, we're in late March, the honey flow is on, and I'm running out of three frame mating nuke, so I'm uh, go ahead and uh, making a few more. But uh, um, a beekeeper came by this weekend and asked a good question that I thought was worth a video. Uh, and it was about the hole saw size I use to cut the holes in my lids for my uh, regular mason jar top feeders. Um, what I have found through experience is 71 millimeters is the size you need. Uh, 2.8 inches is what that equates to, but if you buy one of these online, stick to the millimeter of 71 millimeters. Uh, you're not gonna find it at the box store in my experience, so you might end up heading online uh, to find it. A uh, hole saw that, you know, doesn't have to be red, of course, but 71 millimeters is the size. And I just cut these holes here in, the, in there um, with a uh, drill press, and then the, the regular lids fit just right in there. Not tight. With a little bit of paint, they get a little bit of snug, and of course the bees propolize them over very, very quickly. Um, if it's a little loose, if, you, if your bit gets dull and you kind of go in at an angle and it gets a little bit loose, you can always just add a little bit of beeswax onto the edge of your lid and it'll fit very, very snugly. I'm gonna show you how I do that on the drill press here in just a second, just to get, let you visualize the actual cutting of the hole. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the second subject of this video, which is a little bit more uh, unfortunate is the observation hive uh, is not doing well. It looks like it multiple swarms happened and there's no queen in there at the moment and I'm not seeing any eggs. But I've got something I want to try. Um, stick with me for that. Let me go to the drill press, show you how I cut this hole, and then we'll go to the observation hive and I'll show you where we are. Stick with me for a second. All right, here we are at the drill press. Um, where you put this hole uh, is up to you. My personal technique is to not put it dead in the center because if I put any sort of food, uh, pollen patty, or anything else in the hive, it might be on one side or the other of that. So I typically divide the lid into thirds and I put it in the end of one third. That way I can always turn the lid around and move the jar to the other end. And for me, it's as simple as, I've got this lined up and I eyeball this in the center with this hole saw. Um, and it goes, About as simple as that. A little bit of sanding, get the dust off, um, and then this fits in there just right. So if you see, this is a little bit loose, like I mentioned, but as soon as you put any paint, if you just give a little bit of a rim of paint, that fits in there perfectly. I don't think a 70 millimeter would work. I think that would be too small. 71 is the right size. Uh, it just needs a little bit of uh, paint or beeswax just to make it a tight fit if you don't paint it. Um, okay, let's go over to the observation hive and let me show you what's going on over there. Okay, some of you have been asking for observation hive videos. Uh, this hive did swarm. I did not catch the swarm. It went to an enormous ball of bees on the oak tree and they didn't even stay there six hours and they were gone and I don't know where they went. Um, but if you see here, we definitely have some queen cells that have hatched out. Um, these bees are in here just milling around. When you see this few number of bees, there may be a few bees in the middle in here, but the fact I see no eggs on this side and here's the telltale sign, look at this. A tiny little cluster of bees here and here. And while you might think, oh, there's probably a queen, I'm not seeing any eggs. So if there was a queen, she did not come back and successfully mate. Um, there's a little bit of glistening uh, nectar in here, so they are collecting some nectar. I do have some food up here, I can make sure they're fed. But this is a dying hive, and I don't think it's gonna make it. Now, I do have an experiment I'm going to run, and it's because I don't have time to take this apart the rest of this weekend if this, does, if this experiment doesn't work. One of my queens has hatched and I didn't have a mating nuke made up for her. So I have a virgin here um, that has hatched and I've got, she's uh, about two days old. I've had her in here with some water and um, some uh, honey and she needs a hive badly. Um, and honestly, introducing virgins can be a little bit tricky. Right? And she just fell on the ground. <laughs> She's got wings. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is introduce her to this hive and see if they will take care of her and maybe she will mate. If she doesn't, I'm just gonna need to replace uh, this hive with a mated queen, give them some brood and go. So I am going to try to get her in here very, very carefully. Uh, I've opened the hive just a smidge and we'll see if I can get her to walk in and then perhaps they will attend to her. Usually hives ignore virgins. Um, there's enough of room for her to get in there. There she goes. And as soon, 
Is she is in, all right? She's in there. So I, I, I guess I'll just keep you posted on whether or not they accept this virgin. They need to feed her. They need to give her some food um, and take care of her if they can, or she needs to find her own food. She's had honey and water, like I said, for the last few days. So once again, the observation hive is a great place to learn what's happening. Multiple swarms, perhaps one of the uh, virgins that uh, was supposed to stay with this hive did not come back and mate. Uh, but the number of bees that are, are gone leads me to think this was a multiple swarm scenario and they really almost absconded from this hive uh, based on the situation. This was all packed with brood just a few days ago, so all the bees are gone. Anyway, that is where we are with the observation hive today. A little bit of a sad state of affairs, but honestly, this is what's going on in our apiary too. We just happen to get to look at this through the glass. So I'll keep you guys posted on that virgin to see if she mates. Here's another cell down here. I even labeled that one it was capped on the first. You can see they haven't even chewed it down. Lots to learn. Hey guys, I just want to insert this clip here uh, before I post this video. So there she is. She made her way up to the top and boy, look at the attention she's getting. Uh, she needed this uh, bath. Uh, they're all cleaning her up, hopefully feeding her, but that is a good sign that they're okay with her. Um, and this was a hopelessly queenless hive. This is the scenario where a virgin usually works. But in any case, I found her. She's not marked because she's not laying. I will mark her only if she successfully mates and comes back and lays eggs. But uh, I'm gonna let this ride and just see if a tiny little hive can be rescued with a, uh, a, a lonely virgin. See how it goes. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I know this was short and sweet. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of content. I'll keep doing it. Have a great day, everybody.